How's it going, man? Uh, not so good. What's wrong? You want to talk about it? I looked at my hair last night. I noticed it started to bald. Oh, no way. I remember when I was starting to notice the same thing, too. Look over here. Do you see any balding? Yeah, I actually do. Right here. Seriously? It's that obvious? My mom said it wasn't that bad. Breathe, Matt. I'm going to show you a video that helped me calm my nerves and made me more aware of male pattern baldness. Male pattern baldness is also known as androgenetic alopecia. It's very common to know someone that is bald, from our favorite celebrities to our favorite cartoon heroes. In fact, half the adult male population is affected by male pattern baldness. The risk of balding increases with age, with some individuals experiencing it as early as their teen years. Male pattern baldness is characterized as a genetic disorder, which results in the conversion of terminal hair to velous hair which is short, thin hair. It is defined as a loss of hair beginning at both of the temples, which eventually recede to form a M-shaped hairline. There is also thinning that occurs at the crown of the head. Eventually, this will lead to partial or complete baldness. When considering treatment for your hair loss, it's important to understand just how far your hair loss has progressed. This will help ease the communication when relaying this information to a doctor or prevent a misdiagnosis of the condition. Luckily for this, we have the Hamilton Norwood Scale. The Hamilton Norwood Scale was created to grade the severity of hair loss. The scale goes from type 1 to type 8. Norwood then made modifications to the scale to add middle grades 3A, 4A, and 5A. The A patterns are used for the uncommon patterns. This scale is used to test whether a treatment is successful or not. John, pause it, pause it. What am I on the scale? Do you think I'm a type 2? Man, I'm not a doctor. Let's continue watching the video. Okay, Dr. John, let's get back to the video. So what causes male pattern baldness? Genetics and environmental factors are strongly linked with the occurrence of male pattern baldness. There is an increased chance of male pattern baldness with a family history of balding. This can be inherited from either your mom or your dad. So if you hear the myth that you inherited baldness from your mom, it's not completely true. However, the nature of inheritance still remains unclear. Researchers have found an androgen hormone, which is a hormone that stimulates and maintains male characteristics, to be related to hair loss, specifically dihydroxytestosterone, or DHT for short. The enzyme 5-alpha reductase type 2, located in the hair follicles oil glands, permits the conversion of testosterone to DHT. DHT attaches to androgen receptors on the hair follicle and causes miniaturizing of the follicles. However, the exact mechanism remains unknown. With male pattern baldness, the antigen phase, which is the growing phase for hair, is reduced. Since the growing phase is shorter, the hair length will not be as long and will therefore lead to a longer telogen phase, which is the dormant stage. Hold up, I kept blaming my mom for this. I guess I should apologize to her. Yeah man, it really seems like no one gets the genetics behind it. Yeah bro, I was watching the video. I got it. Start it again. I want to know more. There are two treatments that are currently used. The first one is oral finasteride, or Propecia. It is a 5-alpha reductase type 2 inhibitor. It inhibits the conversion of testosterone to DHT. Studies demonstrated that 1 mg per day can reduce DHT by 60% in the scalp and serum. It is important to know that higher doses will not lead to better clinical results. If successful, this should continue to be used as the balding process will begin once again when Propecia use ends. There are some rare side effects associated with the drug, including a decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and decreased ejaculatory volume. The second treatment is topical minoxidil, which is also known as Rogaine, and is found in the form of a topical lotion and more recently in foam. The mechanism of this treatment is not fully known, however, some research indicates that it promotes the survival of dermal papillary cells and causes vasodilation of blood vessels to improve hair follicle viability. There are some rare side effects which include skin irritation, itching, skin rash, and other rare effects such as headaches, dizziness, and chest pain. Please talk to your doctor for more information on the current treatments presented in the video. So how do you feel, Matt? I feel a little bit better. It's not as bad as I thought. 
See, it's not so scary, man. We gotta embrace our balding.